A cell biologist will love to see what happens inside the cell. The discovery of the green fluorescent protein and improvements in light microscopy have brought new and exciting discoveries on a yearly basis. Still, we always ask ourselves, how do cells behave in their native environment? They are surrounded by thousands of different cells, by blood vessels that provide their nutrients, and by the extracellular matrix that provides support. We now have the ability to look at them in living tissues. In our lab, we have developed ways to image subcellular processes inside the cells of several tissues. We call this approach Intravital Subcellular Microscopy, or ISMIC. These videos show the dynamics of endocytosis in the kidney and liver. It is like discovering a new world. Every day we go to the microscope and we have the opportunity to unravel new biology and ask new basic questions. Our main interest is to understand how cellular membranes change shape during biological processes. This is called membrane remodeling, and we want to understand how certain proteins provide mechanical forces to deform membranes. One of the processes that we study is protein secretion in exocrine organs. When you eat, the pancreas and the salivary glands secrete all the enzymes that you need to digest food. These enzymes are stored in large vesicles that fuse with the plasma membrane. We found that after the enzymes are released outside the cells, the membranes of the vesicles are inserted and absorbed into the plasma membrane. We call this process integration. This process cannot be reproduced in cell culture. In this movie, you can see secretory vesicles in the salivary glands, highlighted by the red arrows, that fuse and are integrated into the plasma membrane, the blue line. This is a beautiful example of membrane remodeling. So what drives the integration? We found that actin filaments are important. They form a cage around the vesicles that contracts and pushes the membranes. The contractions are driven by an actin-based motor called myosin-2. Myosin-2, which also forms filaments, binds to F-actin and generates tension. Like the finger squeezing this ball, we will show you how we studied this process. In order to see the actin appearing on the vesicles, we used mice engineered to express a fluorescent marker for filamentous actin in green and a marker for the plasma membrane in red. If you focus on the inset in this movie, you can see the secretory vesicles in the pancreas that fuse with the plasma membrane and become rapidly coated with F-actin before their integration. When we take away actin using a drug that does not allow the formation of the filaments, the vesicles do not integrate into the plasma membranes. Instead, they begin to grow and get stuck at the plasma membrane. We can also image how myosin-2 jumps on the granules after the actin filaments are assembled. In this video, we used a mouse that expresses fluorescent actin in red and fluorescent myosin-2 in green. The vesicles integrate into the plasma membrane after myosin-2 is recruited, but in mice engineered to not express myosin-2, the integration is stopped. Here's this contractile machinery also used in other physiological or pathological processes. We are beginning to investigate this question. For example, during cell motility. This is an immune cell that is moving inside a blood vessel in breast tissue. The green fluorescent is again myosin-2 that is recruited in different areas of the plasma membrane to drive this complex motion through contractions. Or during wound healing, these are neutrophils in a mouse that express a marker for the actin filaments and that crawl inside a wound to help repair the injured skin. The membranes of these cells are constantly remodeled as the cells move. Or in tumors, these are few examples of what can be accomplished with intravital subcellular microscopy. This approach is opening the door to investigate cell biology under both physiological and pathological conditions in multicellular organisms. This is a dream coming true.